Money has a question. Hey. <clears throat> Does the 4% rule temporarily change to be higher when cash is paying around 4%? Four percent. And rule. could you tell what the four yeah, percent rule yeah, yeah. is? I want to make sure. I'm, I want to make sure. I want, I'm trying. I'm trying to put myself mm -hmm. in e-money's headspace. What that? What they're thinking through? Does the four percent rule change temporarily? Change temporarily change because cash is paying high rates. All right. So the four percent rule is this idea that if I build up a portfolio. Based on historical market environments, I want to say that Daniel, you can nod yes or no. They they back tested this back to like the fifties or sixties, isn't that when the study went back to something like that? And they said, said yes. in all of these market environments, what withdrawal rate was sustainable where people didn't run out of money the most? Right, like what was a sustainable withdrawal rate over the long term? And the general consensus has been four percent. If I have a portfolio and I draw four percent annually off of that. Odds are I should not run out of money given the historical average returns on the market. Well, it makes a lot of sense, right? The reason the 4% withdrawal was put into place is so that you don't have to change your lifestyle because how's the market behave, right? What, what often happens with the market? Last year, it lost 19%. Year before that, it made money. Year before that, it was up. Sometimes the market's up 14% and then down 2% and then up 20% and then down 3% and then down 4%. And very rarely does it hit that 4% number. But on average, when you look at rolling returns, you're banking on your portfolio making greater than that. So if I'm making 6%, 7%, 8% annualized over the long term, and I'm only pulling out 4%, I should be able to maintain the same standard of living. So eMoney's question around does the 4% rule change is actually a bit of a, of a, of a, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a bit of a conundrum, right? Because the entire purpose of the 4% rule was so that it would not change. Mm. So that you would not have to change your retirement lifestyle. So that you would not have to adjust too gravitously. Because could you imagine if, you know, you got a million bucks and you're living off of 4% of that. And then the market dropped. And then so then all of a sudden that next year, you have to like cut your lifestyle way down. It's supposed to provide a stabilized method of you figuring out how much money can I live off, live off of over the long term without having to make these adjustments. Now, here's what cash has allowed people to do. Uh, for the past couple of years, you know, when you, when you manage a portfolio, you kind of think about it in um, sort of two, two segments. There's like your risk on, and what we call risk off, risk reduced. It's not truly risk off, right? But it's risk reduced. And you got to figure out how to balance that. It's like squeezing a balloon. How hard do you squeeze each, each side of the balloon? Well, in the low interest rate environment we've been in for the last decade, risk off has been hard. Risk reduced has been hard. You know, we've been in this environment with fixed income where it seemed likely that rates were going to rise. Well, when rates rise, the value of bonds drop. So you had to think differently about how you were navigating your fixed income or risk off, risk reduced side of the portfolio. Now that rates have risen, now that cash is yielding four and a half, five percent, it's not incredibly difficult to go navigate the risk reduced, risk off side of the portion. So everyone's saying, okay, great, I love it. I'm gonna put all my money into 5% cash. I'm gonna put all my money there. And I'm going to live off 4% and things are going to be great. Lee Corso, not so fast. Here's what ends up happening. What, what was the inflation number that just came out this morning, Daniel? He was like, our inflation numbers are 7%, 8%. We're seeing this. Well, if you have cash that's paying you 5%, but inflation is actually 7%, you're losing, you're losing purchasing power through time. So you want to make sure the portfolio that you have in place not only can with, uh, sustain your withdrawal rate, but also grows and accounts for inflation. So I don't think that rising rates has allowed us to adjust or deviate from the 4% rule. 4% rule, rule. I think that rising rates has now allowed us to move back to a more pr traditional way of navigating risk off, risk reduced, fixed income side of the portfolio.